Today I'm going to show you how you could take ordinary tiles I got from the Home Depot, a beautiful napkin I got from Zippy's Designs, and create this gorgeous decor. I'm going to take you step by step like I usually do. So this is a beginner's project. If you like these kinds of projects, subscribe to my YouTube channel, Decoupage DIY with Joan Marie Domino. Give me a thumbs up and drop a comment and let me know if you're new. All right, let's get started. Okay, here's an ordinary ceramic tile, glazed tile I got at the Home Depot. And because it has a smooth surface, like all smooth surfaces, we wanna give it a quick wipe with regular alcohol. So I have a little cotton ball and I'm just gonna go over it really quick just to make sure it's nice and squeaky clean. Now that the tile is nice and dry, we're going to put on two coats of chalk paint. Now, whenever we're doing a smooth surface like this tile, even though it's white, chalk paint really grabs onto the tile and then the napkins grab onto the chalk paint. It just works so well like that. So I'm going to be using this. It's a little sponge pouncer. This is the chalk paint I buy big containers. So I put them into little containers and I put my little sponge dabber in there. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna dab over the entire tile, just like I'm doing there. I'm gonna cover the entire surface. You wanna make sure that's very important. Then we're gonna put it off to dry. Now that it's dry, we're ready to put on coat number two. And we're gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna take my little sponge dabber and I'm gonna put it into the paint. And by the way, if you're wondering, I love Rust-Oleum's chalky paint. It comes in a container, so you can put it into smaller containers like I do, but I love it. I think it does such a great job. All right, let's let that dry. Once the tile is dry, we're ready to go in and put two coats of Mod Podge. There's the brush I'm gonna use. Now, if you don't wanna buy a lot, you can get these small containers of Mod Podge at the Dollar Tree. I do buy bigger containers and I put them in small containers like this. And now I label them so I know which Mod Podge variety I'm using. Now, when I'm gonna be putting two coats on, I'm going to say both coats should be nice and thin, nice thin coats, but you want to make sure you cover the entire tile from top to bottom and side to side, especially those edges. Then you're going to let it dry. Now that the first coat is dry, we're ready to do coat number two and we're using Mod Podge. There's the little bottle you can get at the Dollar Tree. And again, I put mine into little bottles. Now, when you're doing a project like this, you're gonna be doing a couple of coats. I suggest you just kind of flip it around like that. And now you're gonna be going in the opposite direction and you're gonna get better coverage that way. So again, just light coverage, okay, light layers. It's better for light layers and a lot of thick layers. So nice and light, side to side and top to bottom, and you're going to let that dry. Now, if you're wondering why we're letting this dry, it's because we're going to be using the iron-on method. Now, we've used the iron-on method on wood coasters and MDF coasters, but now I'm gonna show you, you can also use the iron-on for ceramic tile. The Mod Podge is dry and now we're ready to put on our napkin. This is a beautiful napkin. I got this from Vippies Designs, www.vippies.com. This is perfect for the project I wanna do, but remember, you're not limited to just the napkin that I use. You can pick any napkin that will fit that you like. Now I'm only gonna need one square. So I'm just gonna cut that out like this. And then I'm just gonna put the other three aside. See, I can do three more if I want to. All right, now in decoupage, remember, we only use the top printed ply. So what I need to do is to separate it from the back plies. This has only one back ply that is unprinted. So I'm gonna put a little bit of Mod Podge between my fingers and get it nice and tacky. And I'm just gonna press it up there in the corner. And then I'm just gonna release my fingers and I'm gonna pull it apart. And now I'm only going to have the top printed layer. We can put that piece aside. Look how pretty that is. All right, we're gonna line it up now and see where it fits. All right, this is going to fit perfectly on this tile. So just make sure that whatever napkin you pick, it's the same thing it's going to fit. And my iron is ready. This is a Cricut iron. When it's green, that means it's ready to go. This is the on and off. And I'm going to be using the highest setting. That's the hottest. I'm going to place the napkin down on top of the tile. And I'm just going to move it around a little bit until I have it in a good spot like that. 
Now I'm taking a piece of baking parchment and I'm putting that on top of the napkin and I'm just gonna check under that one corner. Okay, I just wanna make sure it wasn't folded down. And now I'm going to hold it in place and then I'm going to take my iron, which is ready to go, and I'm going to start to go over the tile like that. And what's happening is the glue is melting. And since the Mod Podge glue is melting, that napkin is adhering perfectly. Okay, we'll put the iron back in its little holder and we're gonna take a little peek. And this is hot, by the way. So always remember you're using hot iron, it's gonna get hot. And we're just going to check the edges and it looks like everything is adhered very well. Now, tiles, they get hotter than wood, okay? And they retain the heat. So you wanna definitely give it extra time to cool. All right, the tile is nice and cool. Again, they stay hot for a while, so make sure it's cool before you go on to the next step. And that is to remove this extra napkin that's hanging off the edge. And this is very simple to do. I'm using a regular ordinary nail file. I'm doing a downward stroke and that edge is coming right off and the nail file does a good job. I love using a nail file when I'm trimming off the edge of a napkin. It gives me a nice clean look and there is a little piece hanging there. I'm gonna pull that off. Now, on to the next step. I want this really glittery because you know, it's a winter scene. I'm using my favorite Mod Podge variety, which is extreme glitter. It's Mod Podge glue with the glitter right inside. All right, let's open it up. And I'm going to put my brush inside. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see the glitter. No, not really, but you're going to see it once I put it onto the tile. So I'm going to put the Mod Podge Extreme Glitter over the whole napkin. I'm going to tell you, don't overwork it because then the napkin might wrinkle. So just put a nice even coat on. All right, I want you to see it. I'm going to hold it up. I think you're going to see the glitter now. Look at that. Look how sparkly that is. And since the glitter's inside the glue, that glitter's not going to come off. Very pretty, love how it came out. Now that the tile is dry, I'm ready to go in and do the edges because the edges is just plain and it's white. And I wanna frame out the tile with these beautiful deer. This is one of the things you can use. This is a Posca paint marker. I like them, I've used them in other projects. And this is a pen from the Dollar Tree. So if you have one of those, you can give that a try as well. Now, pain markers, they need to be shook before you use them. And I've already done that with this Posca one. So I'm gonna go in and I'm going to paint the edge like that. Now, I have to be honest, using paint markers can be a little bit tedious and paint from a bottle would probably be quicker. The only thing is I find when I use the paint pen, it bleeds a little bit into the napkin and it gives me this really nice, Edge here. I'm going to hold it up so you can see. I'm going to do that all the way around. I finished the edges and it's completely dry and I hope you can see what I mean by just doing a little bit of the top and having it bleed really frames it out nicely. All right, the next thing I want to do is I'm going to add some snow but not real snow. It's this kind of snow and it's nice because it gives a nice three dimension to your projects. I'm using Duncan Glittering. Now, if you can't find this particular brand, there are other brands of snow. They all work the same way. This just happens to be one that I had on hand. All right, I'm gonna take off the lid so you can see what it looks like. And this is just a plastic knife, a crafting knife that I got. And I'm gonna scoop some out and it's kind of got the texture of gonna say like a fluffy spackle, I guess. That's the closest I can compare it to. And I'm going to start to pat it down. Now, when I'm putting on snow like this, this fake snow, uh, also, this is going to stick. Like, you might think, oh, that's going to chip off, but it doesn't. It really stays on. Now, I'm thinking, all right, where is the snow? The snow is going to be where the deer are. The deer are standing in snow. So I'm going to go all along the bottom the same way, just patting it on. I want to turn this to the side. I want you to see how this snow, this artificial snow, gives a lot of dimension to the project. So anytime you're doing something that has snow on it, this is a great product to use right along with it to give it extra, extra dimension. Now I see there's some snow in the tree as well. So I'm going to take a little bit here and there and just put it onto the tree and give the tree a little more dimension. I'm going to continue to play around with this snow. You know, there's really no right or wrong and you can add as much or as little snow as you want and you'll know when it's done. Just let it dry.
Now that the snow is dry, I'm ready to put on a sealant, and this is my favorite, Dora Clear, and I'm going to be using the gloss variety. Why? Because of all the glitter I put on top. Okay, so I put the gloss clear inside this container, and I marked it, okay? So I know what variety I'm using. Big tip there. All right, I'm going to put my brush inside. I'm going to start to put it on and I'm doing a fairly thin coat. I'm only going to be doing one coat, but I am going to be going right over the snow as well. So it's going to be protected. Now that I've done the top, I'm going to go around and I'm going to do the edges. Well, as you're going to see when I go along that, I did not realize that the marker I used was not waterproof and look, it came off and I could have gotten that into the door clear. So you just want to make sure that whatever you're using is waterproof before you use the door clear. Now that the door clear is dry, I decided, you know, the Mod Podge glitter and the snow is just not enough for me. I want to add some of these little gems. Now, everybody has these kinds of things in your stash. Just look and see what you have that would work beautifully to add to the snowflakes like I'm doing here. I was really glad I decided to do this because it just gave that little bit extra touch that made it really pretty. So just go all the way around and put in as many as you want. I'm going to hold this up so you can see. I just love how that looks, the glitter with the gems. Now that my tile is completely done with the glitter and with all the little gemstones, I'm thinking, well, how am I going to display this beautiful piece of decor? Well, I had went to the Dollar Tree and I picked up some of these little paint kits. You see it there with the paints and the easel. Um, the easel is perfect. I couldn't believe when I took it out and I opened it up and I put it on top, I thought, well, this is exactly the right size. I just don't like that color red, but you know what? This was a really easy fix. I just took some white chalk paint and some blue paint. I mixed them together and I got the perfect shade that went along with the tile. Now this is one way that you can display these tiles, but I actually have another way that's gonna come up right after I show you what this looks like standing up. There's another way that you can display these beautiful tiles. Look how nice that is. Well, if you don't have a lot of horizontal space, I've got another way to display these. All right, for a different way to display them, I'm going to be using mulberry paper and a sign that I got from the Dollar Tree. Also very budget friendly um, when we're doing this tile, we're using things that come from the Dollar Tree. Now, I'm not going to need to keep this sign inside, so I'm just gonna remove it like that. I'm also not going to be using these beads. I'm going to have a different way I'm going to hang it up, but those are awesome beads. So I'm just going to cut them off like that. And then I'm going to put them off to the side and I'm definitely going to use them in another project. I love the way the tile came out and I decided, you know, I really want to make this frame fancy enough and high end enough to go along with that beautiful tile. So I'm not going to paint it. I'm going to be using mulberry paper. We've used this before. It's fuzzy. It has all these little fibers running through it. And I'm going to wrap it around the frame. But you know what? I'm not going to leave it white. I'm going to paint it metallic silver. Now, you can buy the mulberry uh, paper in colors, but I have so much white. I'm like, I'm just going to paint it. And it's going to work fine. And it did. So I'm just dipping my brush into the paint. And I'm going to go over as much of the mulberry paper as I think I'm going to need. As I was painting the mulberry paper, I thought, you know, I really want to make sure I have enough. Let me hold it up so you can see. It's really very pretty. Well, I ended up painting a pretty big piece because I didn't want to run out. I'm going to show it to you how shiny it is. But you know what? You can use the other side if you want instead. But I am going to use the silvery side. And I'm going to put it around the frame, but I'm not going to use big pieces. I'm going to use small pieces, you know, like we did for the plates and like we did for the candle holders. I want to give this frame a lot of texture. So I'm just going to tear off as many pieces as I think I'm going to need. And just keep tearing them into pieces until you have a nice big pile like this. That should be enough for me to do the entire frame. Okay, so... I'm going to take some Mod Podge. Remember, I mark my Mod Podge so you know which one, uh, which brand, which variety, excuse me, that you're using. 
and I'm going to apply the Mod Podge directly onto the frame. So I'm going to start with one piece, and I'm going to start up there in the corner, put the Mod Podge on, grab a piece, and put it down. Remember, you can put it down either side. It doesn't have to be the shiny side. I just decided I'm going with the shiny because of all the sparkle. I'm just putting it on there, and I'm brushing it down. Make sure you have enough Mod Podge underneath like that. Now, mulberry paper is probably one of the funnest papers I have been using. We did it a lot of projects with this, especially on glass. If you have not seen my videos where you can make plates and candle holders using this mulberry paper, they're so beautiful. It's such a versatile um, product that you can work with. Well, if you like paper crafting, you're definitely going to like mulberry paper. Now, I'm loving how this came out because I'm getting a lot of texture uh, from the overlapping and from the mulberry paper itself. Because remember, it has all of those fibers in it. And, you know, I want to give a shout out to my group, um, Decoupage DIY with Joe Marie Domino private group, which you can join if you want. You guys love the mulberry paper. So many of you are posting projects. You tried the mulberry paper and you really liked it. So you've been doing it on your jars and on your plates. Really looks good. It's not hard to work with. All right, I've gone all the way around the edges and I also did the sides. And remember, you want to do the insides as well. And I love how this came out. It doesn't look like a Dollar Tree frame to me. The mulberry paper gave it a lot of texture and the metallic is really going to go along with that tile, that beautiful sparkly tile. This was a little bit tedious, but worth it. Now I'm going to need to frame out the tile because remember the tile is smaller than this insert that I took out, the sign that's in there. Um, so I'm going to want to put a piece of cardstock in there. Look how pretty that is. That's the perfect shade of blue. But now that's going to fit right inside the frame because again, that tile would be way too small for that frame. But this is going to be very easy to do. And this is just a cardstock. It's nothing special. So I'm going to actually use the sign itself and I'm going to use the printed sign um, side, excuse me. It doesn't matter, you're not gonna see through it anyway. And look what I'm using. I am using Aileen's double stick tape runner. You know who has this? Vippy's Designs has it and in the 65 feet. That's right, check it out, www.vippies.com. So I'm going to use the tape and I'm going to go all the way around. It's going to make it so easy for me to attach to this blue cardstock. Now that the sign um, is all covered with tape, I'm going to put the piece of blue cardstock on top and this is going to work. It's going to work real easily because I don't have to measure anything. I'm just using the sign itself. There you go. So now we just have to cut off the extra border and this is going to fit right inside. I love when things are this simple, right? So go all the way around and take off the blue like that. And let's take a look. Now it's exactly the right size. We know it's gonna fit in there. Let's put the tile on top. That's perfect. That is the perfect shade of blue and it really accents that tile. Now we want to attach the tile to the cardstock, but remember the tile is heavy, so we need an industrial strength glue like this E6000, which is meant for things that are heavy like tile. So I'm just going to flip it over. It's no big deal. And when I flip it over, you're going to see there are ridges in there. So I want to get them on the ridges. If they go in the inside parts, um, it might not adhere to the cardstock. So we definitely want to do up on the parts that are raised. So we're just going to take it and we're just going to start to just put it on. Um, it doesn't really need a lot. You're going to see I put a real lot on here, I guess, because I'm always like, oh, I don't want it to fall off. But you really don't need to have that much. All right, we're gonna put the cap back on the E6000 because you do not want that to dry out. We're gonna flip it around and oops, it's upside down. So very carefully, I don't wanna get that glue on my skin. That's very important that you know that. All right, placing the tile down and I'm going to put it in the center the best I can. And you do have a little bit of play because the E6000 doesn't dry. It actually cures and it takes between 24 and 48 hours. I would wait as long as you possibly can. Let's take a look with the frame. Oh, I love that. I don't know which one I like better, the frame or the easel. All right, let's leave that alone. 
All right, the E6000 has set up and now we're ready to put the tile inside this beautiful silver frame. So just flip it over and then flip over the tile and I'm gonna put it right inside the frame. It's exactly where it came out. That's what makes it so easy to do. All right, once I have it in there, I'm just going to press these little pieces of metal down that's going to hold the piece of cardstock in there. Very easy to do, um, easy enough to do with your fingers. All right, let's turn it over and take a look. That's really pretty. I love the texture in the frame. It goes along so well with the glitter and the gems and the snow. Now. I would not add a thing to this. I would not put a bow on it or a ribbon or any more glitter. Um, I wouldn't do anything to take away from that beautiful tile. Came out nice. And you know, guys, this would make a really good gift. And you can make a lot of them. Well, there you have the frame. I did it two different ways. And this is the tile inside that beautiful silver frame. And I did that with mulberry paper that I painted with silver metallic paint. It's beautiful. This really would make a great gift and it's not expensive. What did we use? Tiles from the Home Depot and a beautiful napkin I got from Vippy's Designs, www.vippies.com. And here it is on the easel. Again, that's another item I got from the Dollar Tree. This is definitely a beginner's project. You can make a bunch of these. It doesn't cost you a lot of money. And if you like these projects, subscribe to my YouTube channel, Decoupage DIY with Joe Marie Domino. Give me a thumbs up, share with your friends. If you're new, put that down into comments. I would love to meet you. And don't forget, I have a Facebook page. You can like and follow me there.